Good lord. What do you even do with this thing? Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the world's weirdest guitars. Today we're checking out the Agile 10 string pendulum absolute unit of a guitar. I've never played a seven string guitar, let alone a 10 string with a six octave range. I'm not entirely sure what the purpose is of this, but I certainly intend to find out. Now before we get to it, I'll quickly let you know that this video is sponsored by StuMac. StuMac.com is the place to go for your guitar parts, tools, kits, projects, and more. The amp I'm using today for all my examples is a 62 Britplex, which is a kit that StuMac sells. It's a hand-wired clone of an original JTM 45 Marshall 45 watt head at a fraction of the price. Now I got StuMac to put this together for me, but when it showed up, my father and famed amp builder was taking it apart and critiquing it before I even had a chance to play through it. I asked him if he could summarize his thoughts, and this is what he said. It's a boutique hand-wired amp vastly superior to other amps in the price range that would use a printed circuit. It's a no-brainer to go down this road. StuMac has gone above and beyond to make sure that the first-time builder can complete this and have fun with it. The instructions are laid out step-by-step step, and the illustrations kind of remind me of Lego. And if you do get stuck, the support team is more than happy to help you get back on track. They've got a ton of projects like this available, guitar kits, pedal kits, and more. They're the place that the pros turn to for their tools, parts, and supplies. Check them out using the link in the description. I can't recommend them enough. Anyways, Let's get back to that 10 string. So this guitar came to me courtesy of my friend and fellow YouTuber, Rob Scallon. I don't know who set this all into motion, but the idea is you get this guitar, make some music with it, etch your initials in the back, and then send it off to someone else. So KM sent it to AB, who sent it to RS, Rob Scallon, who then sent it to SG. Now I think I'm just gonna start playing around with this a bit and try to get to the bottom of what this behemoth is about. The first thing I can think to do with it is treat it like a seven string and ignore the three thickest strings. The highest strings are B, E, A, D, G, B, E. This is just one more string that my brain normally has to think about. I think I can handle this. Okay, what you just heard would normally have been quite straightforward to play, but I'm not exaggerating, that took me like 50 attempts to get it sounding like that. I'm realizing how much muscle memory gets completely thrown off when I can't wrap my thumb around the neck, when there's all these weird frets, and with all these extra strings, it's like playing Where's Waldo trying to figure out what string I'm supposed to be hitting. I'll be quite honest with you, as of right now, I'm not feeling all that great about my ability to do something with this guitar. But let's carry on. The lower three strings are tuned like the lower three strings of a bass, E, A, D. I think I can handle this. Here's some bass stuff using only those three strings. Again, that felt way harder than necessary to do that. I don't know how anyone could play these lower three strings for any extended period of time. And on top of that, normal bass strings are further apart. So again, the muscle memory gets all twisted around. Thus far, I'm not having the best of times, but I will say this, the amp sounds great, but we gotta venture into some uncharted territory here. Let me play a bass line that also incorporates some chords. I don't even want to tell you how long it took me to get that take. I think I just kind of got to embrace the struggle here. It's hard to exactly explain what I'm going through with this, but it's like, it's close enough to a thing that I know that my brain really feels like I should be able to latch on and have some fun, but it's far enough away that it's like, in a way upsetting that I can't. And keep in mind, I'm showing you the best takes after like hundreds. Why don't we change it up here? I'll do a funky slap thing, but this time I'll show you the very first attempt. And right now I know exactly what I want that to sound like. In fact, I feel like I could probably do it quite easily with a normal guitar. With that, all my troubles just melted away. The chaos in my brain cleared. I feel happy again. I will never take a normal six string guitar for granted again. 
Let's uh, see how long it takes me to get that example together on the old 10 string. It took me an hour and some studio magic to get that take. I think I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to guitars and stuff. I'm trying to find the light in this thing. I guess you can do things on it that you can't on a normal guitar, but I'm telling you, it's not worth the time. It's not worth the effort. And I just remembered, I spent $65 for stringing this thing. Let's do one more example here. Uh, just looking at it, it's made for metal. So here's my attempt at that. All right, I'll admit that was actually more enjoyable than anything else I've played so far, but still my enjoyment level would be lower than where it would be had I been playing a normal guitar. I'm gonna take a break from playing this for a bit. I do think it is interesting though, talking about what makes this guitar unique. The big thing that sets this aside is obviously all the extra strings. And though seven string guitars were popularized in the 90s by metal bands, I didn't know this before I started researching this, but apparently adding extra strings on a guitar goes back to the early stages of the modern guitar. Like I'm talking the 15th century. We've kind of come to think of these things as metal machines, but check out this performance on a classical 10 string. Now that guitar was tuned quite a bit differently than this one. His lowest string was only a tone lower than the lowest string on a standard guitar. And in that situation, it was actually quite cool. The other point of interest is the fan fretboard, which has actually become fairly common nowadays. The idea is it helps with the playability and the intonation. This is the first fan fretboard I've spent any real time with. And I would like to try this concept on a standard guitar because I don't know if it's obvious, but uh, I'm not having the best time in my life. But I don't know, does anyone else feel like these kind of came out of nowhere? I used to work in a guitar store when I was young. I came across a lot of guitars and I never saw a single fretboard like this, one that wasn't completely even. And then all of a sudden, everybody had them. And so it turns out the original fan fretboard was invented and patented back in the 80s. That patent expired in 2009, which meant that any guitar company could manufacture an act like this. So those are the two things that I felt made this worthy of being one of the world's weirdest guitars. It's obviously not quite as extreme as Jared Dines's, what was it, 24 string, Davies Behemoth, or a Chica's 14 string. And I'm good with that. I've had enough of a challenge with this as is. And that brings me to my review the guitar itself is fine. It's not great, but it's a fine Asian made guitar. I think these things retail for around a thousand dollars. That seems about right. I have no problem with the guitar itself, but rather the experience that this guitar seeks to provide. Normally when I'm playing a guitar, I'm enjoying myself. This has been the one exception I've ever come across. Typically, I like something new. I like a challenge, and getting out of my comfort zone has led me to some really rewarding musical experiences, but this, this was just a battle top to bottom. Mentally frustrating, painful to play, at no point did I ever feel inspired to further explore what this guitar offers. It's just not for me. I'm sure there are tens of people in the world who would enjoy this, but there's a reason you don't come across a whole lot of 10 strings. To wrap up these videos, I always try to play something that I feel best encompasses what the instrument does. So I'm gonna take a deep breath here. Put all the bad blood aside and just try to embrace this thing for what it is and see what I can do. Have it before I put some ice on my wrist, there's only one thing left to do. Some of my finer work. So I guess the deal is now I send this off to someone else. So if there's a, a guitar YouTuber that you would like to see suffer, let me know who it is in the comments and I'll ship this off to 
That's some other poor sucker. Don't forget to check out the sponsor of today's video, Stu Mac. Playing through that amp was the highlight of this experience for me. They offer a whole bunch of amp kits, pedal kits, guitar kits, so that you can get some amazingly high-end gear at a fraction of the price. Besides that, they are the go-to guys for your tools and parts for all of your guitar-related experience. You can find more about them at stumac.com. I've also put a link in the description. Thank you all for watching, and an extra big thank you to everyone who supports my channel through Patreon. If you want to check out some of that Sammy G merch, you can find that at shopsamuraiguitars.com. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell, and stay tuned for a wide range of music-related content. Until next time, look after yourselves, look after each other, look after the planet. I'm Samurai Guitarist, and I'll see you again soon.